Good morning, and welcome to the 2021 Capstone Symposium for the Master of Advanced Studies program in Marine Biodiversity and Conservation. My name is Samantha Murray, and I'm the executive director of this program. Welcome, and thank you for being here during Ocean Week. We are here today to learn about the work our 18 master's students have completed during their time here at Scripps this year. We know that Zoom fatigue is real, and we appreciate that you are here even though you're not in the same room with us. Please know you can find us here all day, so feel free to pop in, in and out as you're available, or just keep us on in the background as you go about your day. We are broadcasting live from Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego in La Jolla, and it feels extraordinary to be here in person with you, the students. The UC San Diego community holds great respect for the land and the original people of the area where our campus is located. The university is built on the unceded territory of the Kumeyaay Nation. Today, the Kumeyaay people continue to maintain their political sovereignty and cultural traditions as vital members of the San Diego community. We acknowledge their tremendous contribution to our region and thank them for their stewardship. The MAS MVC program is special. Our program has far-reaching impacts at the local, state, national, and global scale, where we are quite literally transforming the face of ocean conservation leadership, both in approach and in representation. By stitching together the disciplines of marine biology, oceanography, law and policy, economics, social justice, communication, and ethics, we build a fresh, fresh perspective on the most pressing challenges on our ocean and coastline and craft outside the box solutions that incubate during our 12 months together on this campus. Because gone are the days of silver bullets, single discipline solutions for our planet. We cannot affect change on ocean policy without also understanding marine ecology. We cannot protect biodiversity without also enhancing access by nature deprived communities. Indeed, we cannot face our global emergency on climate change without also facing our national reckoning on race and equity. As a result, the work you'll hear about today is interdisciplinary, innovative, relevant, and important by design. The 18 students presenting today have diverse lived experiences, have unique identities, and hold varied perspectives and ideas. That is what allows us to have robust discussions and cultivate critical thinking. Our students were professionals before they even came to us. They are educators, finance experts, filmmakers, painters, fine artists, scientists, entrepreneurs, organizers, advocates, lawyers, and more. And we see these varied professional backgrounds as experiential assets that allow us to better innovate, reimagine, and create together. So the sky is the limit. Our program allows students to dive in incubate and pursue quite literally any capstone project they choose, as long as it advances the marine conservation landscape. So today you'll hear about research, films, surveys, compositions, papers, story maps our students have created. Now, this is the part where I usually transition to photos of our time at Catalina Island, the summer course we spent together, our research cruises, and all the zany adventures that we've had together over the last 12 months. But we didn't have a summer class last year. We bumped it to the end, to the summer coming in just a couple months, because students wanted to learn in person. They expressed it very clearly time and time again when we asked them. They came here to learn in person, to seek mentorship in person, and to collaborate in person. So the summer is to come next month. This year has been challenging for me personally as a director of a program that has only 12 months to provide training, mentorship, networking opportunities, and educational experiences, and to do it all safely. I take that responsibility very seriously. And I'm certain it was challenging for our 18 graduating students as well, in addition to the millions of other university students around the world. It has changed the way that students are able to learn interact with professors and mentors, and exchange ideas with one another. For our students completing a 12-month experiential program, it has had a profound effect on their academic year and their capstone projects. Still, I feel compelled to memorialize this year in photos and memories today, 
to capture what it was and look back on the year we spent alone together. So like so many university programs, we started like this. This was taken around this time last year in June as a way to connect early, even though we wouldn't have orientation for a few months. It's where I first got to know Josh's mealtime habits, which seemed to happen almost exclusively during class time. <laughs> and I first uh, got a glimpse of Thomas's ever-present ceiling fan. <laughs> In the absence of a full summer course, we put on a weekly summer lecture series. And lucky for us, extraordinary people showed up. This is Latisse Lafere, who talked to us about federal ocean policies. Subsequently, she went on to get appointed to the Biden administration. Octavio Alberto talked to us about marine science communication. Nancy Knowlton on ocean optimism. And Jeremy Jackson on COVID and the environment. There were many others. And we witnessed professional relationships being seated here for the first time. This is where Alejandro first met Anela Choi, who was talking to us about deep sea biodiversity. Subsequently, he was able to work in her lab with her all year and is now going on a research cruise with her next week, which is why he is presently quarantining and is presenting today by Zoom. And Isabel Rivera Collazo, who taught us about cultural heritage and climate action. I can see the imprint of this talk, this connection, in our capstone projects today. In September, we managed to hold an in-person orientation day on Scripps at Paca Green. It wasn't easy, it wasn't cheap, it was complicated and it took a lot of planning. We bought a PA system, we kept our distance, we followed the rules, we bumped elbows, and we sanitized a whole lot. And it was totally worth it. We got onto the pier, and some of us even managed to take the September scientific diving course, which was taught in person. We complemented these activities with things like virtual escape rooms to build a sense of cohort connection in a time where physical connection was all but forbidden. And we modified our workshops in negotiation and facilitation and made to stick communication. We found a way to teach in person, both in the fall and in the winter. And we were sort of the only people on campus. So we needed to find outdoor power because all the buildings were locked. So early on, Alejandro and Jean teamed up to lead the cohort in a power outlet finding mission that would allow students to charge their phones and charge their laptops outside on campus, even without indoor access. And I have to give a shout out to Tim DeBold as well because he helped us find and access bathrooms, even though again, we were sort of the only people on campus. So again, we moved forward alone, but together. Students self-organized around outdoor and Zoom events and activities throughout the year, like Halloween gatherings, birthday buddies, Water Wednesdays, and several cohorts of our MS, MAS MBC alumni stepped up to co-lead monthly happy hours with current students. Even with so much social distance, students were finding, and especially in the case of this cohort, being proactive in cultivating so much connection. And we did it. We put on a very small <laughs> filmmaking workshop intensive in November with Day's Edge. And I taught my entire ocean law and policy course in this room we're standing in this fall, very far from students with a mask on and a mic and with what's called an owl uh, because some students were in person and some were remote, which meant new law school level hypothetical exams which the students still may not have forgiven me for. <laughs> I don't think any of our students are going to law school after this. It was all very difficult, and it would not have been possible without Allison Rowe, who you see pictured here, who was our super TA and alumnus from 2020. Round of applause for Allison. <laughs> and still, sometimes we learned online. We learned R from Caleb Linko, and we learned from big shots like Mark Gold, the director of the Ocean Protection Council, who joined us even though no one could travel. We presented our capstone ideas in this room in person last fall to each other, six feet apart. And it wouldn't have been possible without Risa Farrell, Mark Jacobson, Greg Rouse, who were always game to stand with the MBC program at the leading edge of a safe experiential learning, 
even in COVID times. Over the past year, I've been incredibly proud of UCSD's leadership on COVID safety, resources, and health. By doing things like testing campus wastewater and requiring weekly testing by students, faculty, and staff, we largely stayed safe on campus in a very scary time. I went back and counted and I took 36 COVID tests over the course of the academic year. It's one of the reasons we were able to continue teaching in person and stay safe on campus, even as things were getting worse around us. Because to be clear, things were getting worse and very difficult around us. In fact, there was an astonishing layering of challenging and painful events and circumstances co-occurring this academic year on top of a global pandemic. There were wildfires, countless mass shootings. Together, we continued our collective national reckoning on the murder of black people at the hands of police officers, hateful acts on trans people, and violence against Asian American Pacific Islander communities. These realities continued throughout the year on top of everything else. It was an extraordinarily difficult time to teach and it had to be a difficult time to learn. We talked about all of it out loud in class and we tried to make sense of it. And I, as a cisgendered white woman, made plenty of mistakes in doing so, but we created space and students always extended grace to us. We had an election in the midst of it all, and I remember I gave an ocean law and policy lecture the very next day. We spent most of that lecture unpacking it, and it was challenging. And we made it through another challenging part of this year alone, but together as students, faculty, and staff. Right around Thanksgiving, we got sent outside. COVID was climbing, campus policy changed, no more teaching inside, and it was tough on morale. So we got creative. We pooled resources, and by resources I mean an old projector, a screen we found in a storage closet, holiday lights, and camp chairs, BYO camp chairs. It was beautiful and special, and the views were spectacular, and multiple truths, it was not easy. <laughs> never, it was never once easy. It was complicated. It got dark outside. <laughs> some folks were remote, some were in person, and the owl was a must. Eventually, we made our way to the outdoor teaching tent on upper campus. We finished out ocean law and policy there and taught, taught our winter course there as well. We're grateful for these resources and feel privileged to live in a place where we could teach and learn outside, and it's where we'll spend the summer. We witnessed an insurrection and eventually an inauguration, but we turned a corner. We used the tools we had available to see how students were doing, and while we were still burnt out, we were still struggling, we were still worrying, we found ways to build up our reserves, and students remarkably, impressively, astonishingly, found ways to focus on the NBC program and on their capstones. Some of us even traveled for our capstone projects. And in the meantime, we got new surfboards for the NBC program. We continued scientific diving, and some of us took the March class. We went to Tuna Harbor Dockside Market to find new seafood species to cook and prepare in new ways, alone but together. And we went to Ocean Day, a California Ocean Lobby Day with 500 other Californians. The point is that we connected. Even in this time that required distance, student found w students found ways to be alone together. And I see this tangible, visible, palpable connection among these 18 students who supported each other leaned on each other, mentored each other, and learned from one another in ways that may be even more pronounced today than they would be in a typical year. So now more than ever, I'm proud of the MBC program. Our relentless commitment to experiential, hands-on learning, even when logistics are challenging. And I'm honored to have shared this year, which I suspect is unlike any year any of us will experience again in our lifetime, with the 18 of you. I feel fortunate and humbled to have spent this time that will be imprinted on all of us forever, for better or worse, alongside you. I'm impressed with your ability to focus in spite of this world events, and you decided to come to this NBC program anyway, to add additional challenges to your life, to grow, and to trust us to guide you in that. So thank you for that honor. I know we're still burnt out, I know we're still struggling, and I know we're still worrying because I feel it too. And yet you have accomplished so much personally and professionally. 
I've seen it firsthand. Finding connection, mentorship, and community, not in spite of, but I'd argue because of this year, this unimaginably difficult year that we've experienced together. I'm excited to spend the summer with you, for you to see and experience what we've been building over the past many months. And after that, we'll cheer you on from afar when you join an awe-inspiring MASNBC alumni network as you lead in federal and state agencies, as entrepreneurs, in NGOs and foundations, in the executive branch, and in countries abroad. I know you, this next generation of colleagues and ocean leaders, will exert your own influence to support a world that is safe, equitable, inhabitable, and livable for all, for future generations, and that will matter. But for today, we want to hear what you've learned this past year. Before we begin our program, a reminder to please text your questions in and we can answer them in real time. You should see the number in the WhatsApp link uh, just below the YouTube live stream in the description. I also want to take a moment to thank some of the folks who make this program possible. Thanks to PhD students who mentor our students, MASNBC alumni for stepping up in mentorship, individuals and external organizations like TNC, uh, Environmental Defense Fund, Wait and more who work with and guide our students, Scott McCreary, Val Paleo for negotiation training, Day's Edge for filmmaking, our 2021 summer course instructors for agreeing to join us this year, the entire SAO department, Isabel Rivera Collazo, Dick Norris, Anella Choi, Lisa Levin, Jeremy Jackson, Nancy Knowlton, Octavio Alberto, Davi Kasev, Heidi Batzer, Dale Squires, Squires, Jen Smith, Sarah Mesnick, Stuart Sandin, and all the faculty and UCSD associates who make this program what it is. Especially want to thank Sarah McDonald, Phil Zarovsky, and Christian McDonald, Vice Chancellor Margaret, Margaret Leinen, Donna Shabke, Romy Apostol for their support in executing this socially distanced live broadcast from Scripps, Steve Bennett, our tireless communication consultant, Greg Rouse and Mark Jacobson as co-chairs of this program, Allison Rowe as super TA, and Risa Farrell for being the absolute pillar in supporting and advising our students and all around magician in finding ways to have in-person events. And of course, to the 18 students themselves who are here for choosing our program, sticking with it even in COVID times, and for having great ideas and sharing them with us today.